Hey guys, Gina here. I am working on another sketch from Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches. This is day 13. And this, I'm sorry I couldn't print this larger. I don't know why it didn't, I printed so small, I'm not sure. But as you can see, there's lots of mixed media on this. There's a title there, there's some frames for the photos, and there's hexagons. And I don't know if you watched my last video, but uh, I hadn't used these hexagon punches before, and I used them on another layout, and now I get the chance to use them again, which I'm happy about. But the only thing I'm not happy about is I don't have a hexagon stencil. I don't know what happened there. Um, as many craft supplies as I have, I don't have a hexagon stencil. So that kind of was, it threw me a little bit tonight, to be honest with you. So I pulled out some paper. So I have also, I have these two stencils I pulled out I thought maybe I would use. This one, they're both from the Crafters Workshop, Rhonda Palazzari, I think is how you say that. So this is, this is called Hourglass, and then this one is called Arrows and Hearts, because if you look at the sketch, there are just a few arrows going right there that look like that. So I pulled those out, and I have some papers here. I have my hexagon sketch uh, punches, like I said. I have some papers here. This one, I'm not sure where it came from. It came out of a paper pack. It says, hello friend, you are great, and yeah, sure, but I'm not going to be using those. I'm going to use this to punch out some hexagons, like that. So that's what I'm going to use that for. I, did, I went through my scraps, but I didn't have any scraps that really matched what I was looking for. And then I pulled out this paper again. It comes out of a paper pad that I'm not sure what the brand is. But um, again, these I'm just using to cut out some hexagons. And I wanted, again, my layout is going to be pretty tone on tone. That's just kind of where I am right now. I'm going to use this 49 and market paper, 49 market paper. It's vintage artistry and I think it's called ambrosial. Uh, so it looks like this on one side and this on the back. And so I pulled that out and then I have two things of washi tape that I pulled out as well. This one looks like it'll match a little bit better than this one, but I pulled them both out. And Shockingly, I don't know what photos I'm going to use. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to look for some photos. It looks like it costs for two. I think I'm probably going to do my one four by six and um, we will get started. So uh, I'll see you guys in voiceover. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, so I started this layout by cutting off the branding strip on the bottom of the page and then I'm going to cover certain areas of the background paper with clear gesso in the areas that I think I'm going to put some mixed media supplies. So I'm going to put it in the upper left, the bottom right, and the top right, but I don't end up actually putting anything in the top right on this layout. And as I said in the intro, I don't know even at this point what photographs I'm actually going to scrapbook here. So I'm kind of running blind, but I knew kind of what I wanted to do with the background. So I thought that I would just get started with that and then I would see as that went along what photograph would match. So it's a totally different backward kind of thing that I'm doing. Typically I start with the story and the photo and then try to make the layout match that. But this time I started with the layout and then I'm gonna decide what photographs I'm gonna use. So I mixed some texture paste up with some Heidi Swap Mist and I'm gonna use this stencil and I'm going to put it, you know, just through the stencil and give the layout a little bit of texture in the background. So I'm just smoothing that down. I'm putting a, I'm putting a, um, a light coat on there because I don't want it to take forever to dry because I'm quite impatient. And I will use my heat gun to uh, dry this as well. Now I'm gonna pull that up. I love the way that looks. Like I love that stencil now. Um, I really was crazed that I didn't have a hexagon stencil. And don't worry, I ordered one because I had to have one. Sorry, my freeze gang friends. Um, but um, I didn't have a hexagon stencil, so I'm actually gonna use my hexagon punches. And I'm now going to make a error that I'm sorry that I made, but in the end it turned out okay. So I'm using this mist from Studio Calico. It's quite old, it's the warm calico. Um, it used to be super popular when, Cal when Studio Calico came out with their mist to begin with, but. 
I started to just paint it on the page directly and I haven't done like mixed media layouts a lot in a long time so I thought I would just go ahead and paint it on here and what I realized is I could have continued with that uh, I could have continued just painting it on there and then spritzing it with water to get it to run and it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have turned out this dark but in the end so I'm gonna spritz it with water now but in the end uh, with the photo that I decided to use after this all happened I'm quite happy with how the layout how the background turned out so I'm just spritzing it with some water to get that ink moving and then I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry this I must have already done that uh, I must have cut it out so you didn't need to watch me dry something with a heat tool that's the equivalent of watching paint dry quite literally so no one needs to do that so I was going to start putting this, uh, these hexagons down with Tombow Mono Multi Glue and I realized that they weren't, that wasn't going to stick on top of that texture paste. So I pull out some matte media, media, matte, medium, matte gel, matte gel. I'll have to look that up and see what that, that's called. Um, so I pulled out some matte gel and I'm going to put all of the hexagons down with that. I am using a Prima uh, edger to edge the sides of all of the hexagons and I'm just cleaning up my fingers because I have glue. I had glue on the side of my fingers so holding and circling these um, hexagons in my hand wasn't working. So I had to wipe the glue off and I'm just edging all of the corners on all of these hexagons. Because I wanted, after I did this background where I sprayed that dark spray, I really wanted kind of a grungy kind of look. I'm saying kind of a lot tonight. I don't know, I always get stuck on one word, don't I, when I'm doing these voiceovers and I say it over and over and over again. So that's quite funny. Kind of is the words of the evening. So I'm actually recording this at 2 o'clock in the morning so I can get a video up on Sunday morning. Because I'm determined that I'm going to finish all of Christie's uh, 30 days of sketches in April. So I'm behind and I have to get caught up. This is the sketch from day 13. So, but I haven't done them in order. So like I just did day five a little while ago. So that will be up later on Sunday. This will be up early Sunday morning. And then the other one will be up probably, I don't know, evening on Sunday. And then I'll try to do two on Monday as well. So you saw the camera uh, jump there. It's because I was inking the sides of all those hexagons and I didn't really think you needed to watch that twice. So I cut that out and now I'm just placing these smaller hexagons on top of the larger hexagons like they were in the sketch. Uh, I would have used a stencil or a stamp if I had one. And I probably do have a hexagon stamp somewhere but I wasn't going to go and look for it. Stamps are one of the things in my room that haven't been organized yet in a way that makes it very easy to get to. So that is one thing that I'm working on in my scrap room is to figure out a way. I know how I want to store them, but I just need to figure out a way to organize them so that I can get to them quickly. So I'm working on that. So I'm going back to the sketch here and after I, after I place those hexagons, I'm going back to the sketch and just seeing what else I'm going to do. And at this point, it's like, you know what, you need a photograph. And at the as I was making this layout, a photo that I had printed was coming to mind. And it's this photograph right here of my niece. And she made her own Halloween costume last year. And it was super good, <laughs> super good. Uh, but it was... I mean, it's kind of creepy and it's, it's just amazing, this girl's imagination. Uh, so when her mother posted that picture on Instagram, I totally stole it. Uh, I had to scrapbook it. So I've had it sitting because I knew I wanted to do a mixed media kind of grungy layout with it and I haven't had the chance yet, but this layout called for that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, rise, raise it up on a little bit of cardboard um, I tend to do that with mixed media layouts so that my picture isn't, isn't 
um, directly on all of the texture that's in the background. And the sketch called for two uh, banners that came down underneath the photograph. So I'm just going through my black and gray scraps here to figure out which ones I want to use to make those banners. And I decide on this cream and black stripe. And I also decide on that cream and black text. And it's I'm going to cut them out, but then I'm not going to use the um, text side. I'm going to use the te the um, the pattern that's on the other side of that text paper. So I'm going to cut these down. I cut one of them to thir to um, three inches, and the other one I'll cut to two inches. And here I'm just marking an inch and a half on my tag so that I can try to get that point in the center of the tag correct. And I'm going to cut it down to make it fit underneath my photograph. And I'm going to ink all of the edges as, of this as well. And then I'm going to lay that down there. And then I, you'll see me do the same process with this other paper. I'm going to cut this down to two inches. And then I'm just going to eyeball the rest of it. I decided I wasn't going to pull it out and measure an inch and try to figure out where that cut should be. I'm just going to figure it out. I'm just going to eyeball it. So it turned out OK in the end. I probably would have recut it if I didn't uh, like it. but. In the end, it all turned out okay. So now I'm at a point where I'm okay to paste that cardboard down. And because I'm of the glue I'm using, I have a little bit of time between the, uh, the putting the cardboard down and putting these banners underneath of it. So, uh, and there you can see that I used the opposite side. I didn't use the text on that one piece of scrap. I used the um, the other side with those grungy looking black and white squares on that black paper there. I'm going to put this butterfly down. I'm going to pop up the wings on this dimensional adhesive. I'm not removing the back of the adhesive. Uh, I'm just putting them down there to, uh, to give them a little bit of dimension. And then I was going to use the butterfly on the other, the other cut apart sheet there, but then I decided that that butterfly didn't match the one that was on the page already, and this one did. So I pulled this one out instead. So I have a butterfly at the top and the bottom there. And now I'm ready to put my photograph down. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back of that and then put it down on that cardboard there. And at this point, I could have been finished. I was thinking that I was. And then I decided, no, I'm going to put some flowers on this layout. I have a trillion of them, and I don't use them enough. And I thought that uh, the flowers would look, you know, would frame the photograph nicely and look nice with all the mixed media I did on this layout as well. But I'm going to take them, and I'm going to spray them with that calico uh, the same way that I sprayed the background paper. And then I'm just going to pull them to the side so that they dry a little bit. And then I have to clean up my mess because I've made a mess. I love that mat, though, I have to say. If I hadn't said it already in this video, I love that mat. It works very well. So now I'm just going to paste my flowers down. I'm going to lift this up to kind of get those leaves underneath of it. And then I'm going to pop the rest of them on top of the photograph like this. And I'm actually going to paste the leaves on the photo itself because that's how I want them to sit. So I'm going to go get some black buttons first and I'm going to put a black button in the center of each of these flowers just to give it a little bit more of a finished look. And you'll see me here, I'll go ahead after I set some of these and put the glue underneath those petals to get them flowers to sit exactly the way, here we go, exactly the way I want them to sit on that photo instead of popping up right off the page. So it looks like the, they're, you know, they're actually outlining the photograph, they're framing the photograph and not just sitting there uh, with their leaves all up, their petals all up like that. And then I think that this is it. Um, I don't know that I do anything else. Oh, I do put a title on it. I forgot. And my niece, if there's a word I can use to describe her, it's intense. And so I thought with this uh, very dramatic Halloween costume she created and just her personality in general, I decided that I would put the word intense as the title. And then that is going to finish the layout. I'll give you a final look at it. 
I was thinking, do I need something else? And then I said, oh, and then this is what happened. I didn't like at all that that butterfly was facing off the page. So I just pulled it up and put it so it was facing toward the photograph. And then I liked that much better. I felt like the layout was more balanced that way. So here's a final look. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.